Oh my god, boys, will you just stop? After a few more miles down the road, we turned into a narrow driveway. Muffled squeals sound from the trunk, with every bump and pothole that riddles the driveway as we drive towards the house. The gut-wrenching feeling of doom intensifies as the house comes into clear view. Vines, weeds, and shrubbery consumes the porch entrance. Years, if not decades, of neglect and miscare scream in our faces. At one point, I'm sure this was a beautiful home. But the state it is in now tells me nothing good can possibly take place inside. A fungal-colored algae covers the roof shingles and shutters. The attic windows have been shattered. The glass left behind, resembling an angry maw in the broken frame. Wooden patio furniture lay discarded in pieces around the front porch railing, and the lower-level windows had been boarded up. Despite the depressing state of the surroundings, a crisp welcome mat sits in front of the frayed front door. The red-haired woman gestures for me to go in first, as we leave our respective sides of the car. As I turn back to question her, I see her pull a vial and syringe out of her purse. She draws the plunger back halfway, then pushes her thumb down. A yellow liquid spurts out of the end as she primes the syringe. Keep moving, Hank. I got this one. Just open the door for me and go lay down. She snaps as she retreats to the back of the car. Taking a quick moment, I survey my surroundings, trying to assess if it's possible to leave on foot. The winding driveway is long and exposed. Woodland tree lines of the fields on either side are too shallow to hide in. My body sags involuntarily against the wobbly porch railing as my head begins to pound. Under the mat, babe! The woman calls over her shoulder as she prepares to lift the, I'm assuming, now unconscious body from the trunk. Pop goes the weasel! She sings as the last bit of the stranger's body now leaves the trunk and hits the ground. My feet test the rickety steps with trepidation. Each of the four steps creaks at me in protest, as if warning me to stay away or at least stop what I'm doing. The crisp welcome mat lifts with ease, revealing a squared metal key underneath. Why the fuck would anyone even bother to lock this? I met with a smell of rotted wood and mildew the moment I opened the door. They... well... We, I guess now, must be squatting here. There are two makeshift beds that are pushed together in what at one time must have been a study or guest room. Yellowed mattresses sit atop red and black milk crates, fastened with zip ties to create box spring frames. I steal a glance out of the front door and revel that the red-haired woman is gone. A cylindrical trail leads from the trunk to around the back left side of the house. I don't know why the hell she made me go through the dramatics of unlocking the front door if the back is unlocked. A low hum starts to bore into the left side of my ear. My energy seems to wane the louder it gets. My head feels fuzzy and light. I desperately want to sit down. With a pull of sleep becoming stronger as I sit on one of the beds, the concern over a possible concussion fades further and further away. Worst case scenario? I fall asleep and don't wake back up at all. The motto, kill or be killed, feels all too real at this moment. And if I die in my sleep so someone else has a shot to live, so be it. I wake up with my mouth hanging open, coughing wildly as soon as I take my first conscious breath. Much to my sorrow, neither the best or worst case scenario has come to fruition. If I reach up to itch my chin, I notice the neatly trimmed nails and expensive watch. A heartbreaking realization is that I find myself in the exact same place and body as before I passed out. With the relief of my headache ceased, questions begin to flood my mind. Are they really rich? Or just a con couple? Why do they stay here if they have access to fancy clothes and cars? What is she going to do with that woman? Do I have time to save her? I have fallen asleep knowing someone was in danger. The rest of the lower level is empty. Stairs, beaten by time and neglect, render the upper levels utterly inaccessible. I'm surprised to see a note hastily taped to the fridge with a local supermarket sticker. Hank, I hope you're feeling better. I went out to the market to buy cleaning supplies and food. You deserve a home-cooked meal after what you've been through today. Don't go in the basement without me. Love, Georgia.
So, that's her name. A heavy metal door looms forebodingly on the left side of the kitchen wall. A sliding lock and deadbolt sit on the right side. Whoever installed this is very intent on not keeping anyone from getting in, but to keep someone inside from getting out. The coat of white paint on the exterior has started to peel away, revealing rust-colored stains underneath. I can't help but think it's blood. Suddenly I remember the key in my pocket. The one that unlocked the front door earlier in the day. It feels strangely cold in my pocket, despite its resting place nestled against the warmth of my leg. Pulling it out, I hold the vain hope that it might be the same key that unlocks this door. It slides into the lock seamlessly, only hesitating for a moment before the lock springs free. A feeling washes over me, and I can't tell if it's satisfaction or regret. The light of the area behind me only illuminates a small section of the basement as the door creaks open, but unfortunately for me, it's more than enough. A cluster of humanoid figures squats in a huddle over something unknown. Tattered rags hang loose from their bodies. They emit high-pitched screams the second they see me. As the tallest one screams, a hunk of something flies from her mouth, landing on the floor in front of the stairway. Upon first glance, it seems like a piece of ham, but further inspection shows me a severed and chewed human ear. Head trauma or not... I gotta get the hell out of here. I run faster than I've ever ran in my life. A flood of headlights persists itself in the distance. I dive into the tree line just in time to see the battered red car driving back towards the house. Hey there, kids. Thank you so much for listening to tonight's story. And I wanted to tell you, thank you, you know, for listening to me at all. I'm actually coming up on doing this for 10 whole years. Come January 4th, I will have been doing YouTube for 10 years. So that's a hell of a thing, man. And honestly, it, it means nothing without all of you. So thank you for that. Thank you for listening on YouTube or on the podcast. I also want to give a very big thank you shout out to all of you guys out there on Patreon. If you guys want to check out patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, you're able to support the show. Uh, support me. Support my cats. Support, you know, uh, being, being cool folks out there like people like these. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Mr. Thud, Ken Lenda Higuchi, Chumpinski, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kyle, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Raven Hart, 1-800 Nightmare, King Hades F13, Unknown Nobody, Joshua McMeekin, Michael Scarborough, Kazen, this is my real name, no shit, Jason VB Wilson, Infernal One, Little Wolf Gaming, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Niels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckard, Bradley Lipe, Ann Charon, Acid System, Mike Bollock, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brianna Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiri the Sloth, Thomas Burgett, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon, like, I really can't thank you enough. Uh, and everybody who's down there in the description, thank you guys so much as well. And everybody who's not on either of those tiers, who just have a dollar on Patreon, I, I really, I can't thank you guys, like, for making these these past 10 years incredible this this entire time i've ever spent on youtube on podcasting everything amazing and all of you who are at home listening thank you guys so much for listening i hope you all have a wonderful happy holidays and sweet dreams <laughs>